Tere, minu nimi on Tarek. Mul on hea meile te vaatate, minu saadet Nori Kukri. Well, that was my version of Estonian trying to say, hello, my name is Tarek and welcome to Nordic Kukri Show. For the first time ever, I'm taking my Nordic Kukri on the road, visiting one of our neighboring countries. And right now, I'm in beautiful Tallinn, Estonia. This multifaceted jewel of a city that's been influenced by so many countries and cultures throughout the years and now has a stronger and more interesting identity and food culture than ever before. The Estonians love their food and their country, but at the same time, they're open to new ideas and to incorporate new flavors and cooking techniques, making this a very interesting and progressive gastronomical region. So I'm here, of course, to experience that wonderful fusion between old and new and experience the nature and the wildlife that this nation has to offer a visitor like me. And I can't wait to get started. I will start my exploration of Estonia in the capital Tallinn and then head out into the vast and beautiful countryside. The vibrant city of Tallinn's got an exciting food scene, quite similar to the new Nordic cuisine. I will be making lamb's heart tartare with a super strong mustard. The journey then continues to Soma National Park where I will cook a delicious pike patty and serve it with sour cream and seasonal vegetables. Tallinn is a coastal town with almost half a million people and the old town is one of the best preserved medieval cities in Europe, also listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Welcome and it's my pleasure to show you around. This is probably the oldest stone building in the whole lower town. It goes back to the beginning of the 13th century. That's when Tallinn was literally started. People living around in this area peacefully on our own still worshipping trees, stones, water, and that kind of life went on up to the 13th century. What happened then? Crusade. Yeah. We very often say that Christianity was brought here by fire and weapons. Yeah. Danes, Swedes, Germans, and local people started to call it Danilin, which in translation means the Danish town. And if you ever come here and you don't have the time to sort of travel all over Estonia, then you can come here to Restaurant Leib. It's sort of a, an Estonian in miniature, but in a more contemporary setting. It's almost like entering like a little hidden world when you come in behind those gates. Absolutely beautiful. Hi, I'm Tarek. Hello, I'm Christo. Huh? You're the head chef here? Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Fun. Can you explain a little bit about the food that you do here? We try to keep it simple, like uh, not to put too many different ingredients on the plate. Mm -hmm. Just to have maybe three, four different ones. Or just play with uh, textures. So this one goes with uh, beef cheek, roasted carrot, and marinated carrot. Like the new modern Nordic yeah. cuisine. Estonia on, the, on a plate, yeah, more exactly. or less. Yeah. I would love to try some of the food. Yeah. So let's, let's go inside. Yeah. So, what would you like to eat? Uh, I was thinking about the tartare that you mentioned. Okay. Yeah. So, pickled mustard seeds? Uh, yes. Yep. And we'll have some black uh, roasted bread. You like your mayonnaise, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some chuvel. It looks absolutely delicious. Should we go okay. to, to, yeah. uh, to go the dining time. room instead? Yeah, here you are. Okay. Let's try some of this. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay, I'll just dig in here. Yeah. I'll get a bit of everything here on the. Yeah, I usually mix it up more. Oh, wow. The meat is absolutely fantastic, and that crisp black bread there is 
adds a really nice texture to it. It's a dish that really suits the name of the restaurant, because you, you've got bread everywhere here. <laughs> what is this? It's uh, our uh, homemade uh, aquavit. In the last few weeks, it will uh, stay with the till as well. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a punch. That's it's it's good. Yeah, that is uh, that, that's a, that's a good way to start the day. <laughs> Tagurpidi Lavka is a delivery service making it easier and more convenient for people living in the capital to buy fresh and local products directly from small farmers. Customers place their orders online and the groceries are delivered to them. This local initiative was launched seven years ago and today they are representing about 70 farmers and over 6,000 registered users. That's bread, yeah. That's, uh, is that for a customer today? Oh, it's warm. It's warm, yes. It's just made. It's, the producer of these breads is actually right here. So it comes literally like two blocks away or two houses away. Oh, that is fantastic. That is yeah. special. The reason we do it in a pre-ordering way, you get everything fresh. The yogurt is made fresh for this day. And all Estonian made. Perhaps if I can help you out with in, in any form or way today? You can do the, the simple task of taking the box and bringing it to the customer. Yes, I will do that. <laughs> so we're taking your car? Yes, it's here. Okay, so on the way to the first delivery then. So on this delivery, are, are we going very far? It's in the city centre, okay. so it depends on the traffic. This is the place. Oh, spa hotel? Yeah, well, she works here. So here we go. 22.38. Thank you. Bye bye. So, off to the next one? Off to the next one? Yep. We even got a five cent tip. <laughs> Rina's next customer is Merla Livak. She's the author of several cookbooks. Through her cookbooks and workshops, she wants to increase people's knowledge about the origin of food, how to eat healthier, and most importantly, how to get the kids into the kitchen. I have been invited to their home for tonight's dinner preparations. He's my husband, Hannes. Yes. Hey, how are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah. When I got children, I really, really felt the de deficit of this experience to cook and, and everything. So I, I really started to feel myself uh, really dilettant. I think it's great. It does more for your children growing up than you realize when, when yeah. you're doing it, when, right. when they're small. Yeah. <laughs> See? He knew. It's uh, apple juice uh, from natural one. A little bit ginger and cinnamon. Oh, it's delicious. Should we start on the vegetables then? Yes. So, we... <gasps> carrots for the kids? Yeah. If you were to tell me something about Estonian cuisine and the way people think about food in general? I think that uh, the food is coming like a trend. The cooking is like a trend right now. It's good because uh, people uh, are more conscious about the, um, what is healthy and, and that you use uh, like a really... Um, source is really The source, important. yeah, very important. It's, it's coming more and more. We need now the rabbits to eat it. Yeah. The, the ah, yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh, look at the cute little bugger. Some of this? Oh, look, look, look. Yeah. Here, yeah. hey, carrots? Yeah. Oh, my God. We, we don't do it every day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. She wants only beet. Only beets, absolutely. Yeah. It's nice to come to an Estonian family and eat a proper meal. Mm. That's really nice. We, we don't uh, understand how important it is to, to take uh, children to the kitchen and let's, let's cook together. I think it's super important. So um, yeah. I can only congratulate you oh, and um, thank you a lot for inviting us here. It was fantastic. I really thanks appreciate coming, it. Really. Yeah. And thank you guys as well for accepting us. It's going to be really exciting now that we're leaving Tallinn and we're going out into the countryside to see what we can find there. If it's anything as good as what we've just experienced, then I'm in for a treat.
just 45 minutes drive from Tallinn, you can experience a unique meal served by Ants Ustalo, the owner and chef the cuisine of Urbiku. He calls it a lifestyle restaurant and he is using ingredients sourced from local farmers and seasonal products from the surrounding forests. You run a what you call a lifestyle restaurant here. Yeah, the Urbiku Castro Farm is my lifestyle restaurant. It really is a lifestyle restaurant because you live upstairs. You're you right. and your wife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right. That, that, is, that is absolutely wonderful. And you've also served, you know, served up quite a treat here for us. Yeah. We're going to be cutting up the lamb here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I always buy the old carcass because uh, I really love to cut up all the pieces. Yeah. So, and now we can cut off the shoulder. You, you, you want to do that? No, no, you go, okay. go right ahead. Okay, just uh, keep these ones. Mm -hmm. just hold these ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, it's really good ones. And you just follow the tendons? Exactly. There you go. Beautiful. Look at that. So, if you put some salt and thyme and put pig egg, and after 45 minutes, it's ready. For real? Absolutely. In 45 minutes? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. You want to try? <laughs> yeah, let's absolutely. go. Absolutely. And now, some um, mold and salt and some thyme. Almost done. 150 degrees. 150 degrees, yeah. So we open it, we put lamp. There we go. We put some thyme because the flavor comes out. And that's it. That's the quickest and easiest cooking. <laughs> and we know it's going to be amazing as well. Cooking can't be so hard. <laughs> <laughs> because it's lifestyle. Lifestyle needs to be good and Absolutely. Funny. But we're going to have to cut up the rest of the lamb as well, yeah, right? Absolutely. Where's yeah. my knife? Yeah. Right here. There we go. That's nice. That's that's lovely. There we go. Let's go. That's where you go all the way up. And uh, turn it a little bit. Yeah. yeah, here we go. It's done. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Can you lift up a little bit? Yes. Yes. Now it's a great place to cut. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. And these babies are done as well. So I think we just got a first hand one on one lesson on how to cut up a lamb properly. Yeah, that, exactly. that was good. That was good. Thank you so much. I know that you also make a tartar of lamb's heart. Yeah, this is my favorite actually. Yeah, and that's something I've never done. Okay. So, so I would like to try that. Let's try. Because we've got the shoulder in there and that can be the main course and I can try and whip up a tartar oh, of the lamb's heart. Is that okay? I want to watch. We'll give it a try. You have of to course. try new things. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so this will be the first time that I ever make a tartar out of a lamb's heart. The heart is an amazing muscle on any animal. It's tender and it's delicious. The only thing you have to take care of and look out for when it comes to heart is all of the little tendons inside, all the veins and cutting away any excess fat on it, especially if you do in a tartar like today. So let's start by cleaning it out. All of these little tendons, they have to go. So I'm just gonna use my knife, get it in underneath and then slowly start to cut away. And just by pulling it a little bit, you can see where they're going. So that'll be the end of that. And on the outside, you have all of this, this fat here. And that needs to go today as well. So I'm just gonna use my knife and go in underneath here and just gently, gently cut away like that. And I've got a perfect, beautiful piece of meat. Okay, so the tartar, I always use onions because the sweetness of the onions, they sort of break that raw sensation in the meat. And I'm going to mix this tartar up with a bit of a really, really hot mustard. This is a Russian style mustard. It's, it's not shy and, and mustard should not be shy. I had a little uh, sniff at it before uh, and, a, and a very, very tiny taste. I'll have another one now. Just to give you an idea of what it's like. And it'll, oh my sweet Lord. It'll bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> and a little snivel to your nose and that's good. That's not a shy tartar. That's good. That's gonna be good. We'll use some of this, not much, but a little bit. I've got some capers, the onions of course. I'm going to use a little bit of lemon juice, some olive oil, salt and pepper. And just in case that <laughs> mustard wasn't hot enough, I have some horseradish right here. I probably won't use that one, considering just how powerful that mustard is. 
And then on top of it, I've got some really nice white fish roll. And whenever you combine fish and meat, you're looking for something that makes sense. And in this case, it's texture because the roll will pop in your mouth when you, when you bite into it. And it's also the saliness there. So that'll amplify the flavor of the tartar. It's a nice sensation. With this, I like something creamy as well. So I have some sour cream that's been hanging. You could do this easily at home with a coffee filter or in a piece of paper in a colander and just let it sit there until about 30% of the liquid runs off and you end up with a really nice, full fat, beautiful sour cream. Okay, so enough talk, let's, uh, let's chop. So the meat has to be cut down into nice cubes. Just get that in the bowl. And now it's time to add some flavors to it. We'll start with the onions. And then some capers, not many, just a few. And some lemon juice, some pepper, a little bit of olive oil, a bit of salt, and then of course the mustard. I'm just going to use a very, very small amount of what I have in this spoon, like that, and that's enough. And then just give it a stir. All of that is going to go up on these beautiful plates. And then we'll see what he thinks. So, sir. Thank you. And there you go. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Really good combination. The fish raw and, yeah. and raw meat. That's good. Yeah, the saliness there is fantastic. I owe this to you. <laughs> this is really, really nice. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And we still have your lamb. The lamb shoulder. Yeah. I think this is ready. Oh, look at that. So, here we go. That's good. You're going to have to carve that, or I'll, I'll just bite into it. <laughs> oh. Something with a lot of fat, please. Yeah. If possible. <laughs> so simple. So good. That is ridiculous. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. It's so juicy. Um, that's my word. Mm. Mm. This is all you need. Meat and wine. Absolutely. Cheers. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>I'm truly happy that I got the opportunity to meet with Ants and to taste his amazing, authentic Estonian food. I sincerely believe that bringing forward the local food traditions is the future of fine dining and something that will affect how we cook our daily meals at home. And I guess it's true that the Estonians really love their countryside. So let's find out if this beautiful region has even more to offer. So we're here in Soma, and this is an area that can boast with five seasons. They've got spring, they've got summer, they've got autumn, they've got winter, and they've got the flooding. And the flooding season is quite extraordinary because at that time, the water level here can rise between four and five meters. Luckily for us, this is not the flooding season. Still, it's a great time to go canoeing. So I'm meeting up with Ivar here, who's gonna take me out on the rivers. Hey, Hello. Ivar, how's it going? Oh, it's okay. Nice morning. Yeah, yes. nice morning. Nice, Hello. beautiful sun. It is. Well, I'm glad it's not flooding season now. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. uh, if you would come here in uh, uh, late March, early April, uh, it could be that we are standing in the in water. Knee deep in water up here. Yeah. yeah. How did the houses survive? I mean, they will be partially submerged in water. Mm, that's no? right. Yeah. It's not a problem. You open the doors when the flood is gone, the windows and ventilate it. Uh, five days and then uh, it and is okay again. again. Yes, but uh, now uh, modern houses they have isolation. Yeah, and then it is damaged. So you have to 
reconstruct. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you want to go on the river? Yeah, this is a main uh, way to see Soma National Park because there are a lot of rivers and uh, it's a good way to uh, get to the places. Oh, great. Let's yeah. go then. This is unique. Not a single sound. Just going here in a, in a very, very slow pace like this sort of resets the mind a bit. It's very, very uh, almost meditative to go like this. All you hear is the sound of the paddle entering the water and the, you can actually hear the water dripping off the paddle. That's unique in our days where there's normally a lot of huzz and buzz and people in cars and airplanes everywhere, but not here. All I can hear is the little waterfall there and the birds. But, but in terms of, of animals, what, what, what could you expect to see here? In a river we could see beavers or uh, otters. Both are very common. And uh, soon when the snow comes, then uh, you can read all the book of the footprints. And we have all carnivores, uh, three of them brown bear, lynx and wolf living in the park. Oh, wow. You, you uh, take them as a normal uh, part of the nature and they've yeah. always been here. And um, actually, there is no uh, uh, documented uh, cases when wolf has been ever attacking uh, people. Maybe your wolves are friendlier than the Swedish wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Pike, season, delicious. Not enough people eat pike, and it could be because the pike has bones going crisscross inside of it, and it's everywhere. But if you put the meat through a grinder, preferably a meat grinder, once or twice or even three times, you get rid of all of those little pesky bones, and you end up with something that you can basically create anything out of. So here I've got some ground up pike meat. All you need is a bit of cream, salt and pepper, and you're done. And that's what I'm going to do. I will make those into nice patties and just dip them in crumbs and fry them off in nice butter. And with that, we're going to do something really simple. We're going to create some nice shaving of these vegetables. I'll just put these in the simple marinade with acidic vinegar, sugar and water, and that's it. And some berries as well. Now, this is special. Wild, beautiful berries. This is Galderose. This is the first time I've had Galderose. It tastes like a lingonberry. I'm, I'm talking, I'm not cooking. I'm talking, talking, talking. I've got one more thing to tell you though. I've got sour cream here with a bit of horseradish. These two will be combined, a bit of acidic vinegar on top. So I think that's enough talking. Let's start cooking instead. I'll start with the, uh, with the patties of the pike. We need a bit of salt. A bit of pepper and some cream as well. I've got about 600 grams of fish here. I have added about four deciliters of cream. What I'm looking for is to maintain a binding texture. I want to see it, you know, all of it move at the same time. If it doesn't, it means that it might be split. Now that has never happened to me when it comes to pike, but it has happened when it comes to for instance, salmon or other types of fish that are really fatty. I think we've got wolves coming in here. Luckily enough, there's water between us. And then you just grab a generous spoon like that, dip that in breadcrumbs and up in the frying pan. So let's start with the, uh, with the vegetables. So I've got all my root vegetables over here, carrots and parsnips and, and sweet, and that's going to be dipped in hot boiling water with a little bit of salt. The rest is going to be pickled. So in this bowl, I've got water. I'm adding some acidic vinegar to it, and I will add about one to one and a half deciliters of sugar. All I do is that I whisk it, and once it's dissolved, then you just add your vegetables to it and the berries. So I've got 
just about everything prepared except for the sauce. So my sour cream with a bit of horseradish has to be mixed before I'll do anything else. This is uh, ooh, a pre-shredded horseradish and I like it when the food isn't shy. I want it to uh, come out and tell me something. And then just a few drops of acidic vinegar as well, because that'll bring out the horseradish. So it's time to do the patties. Just dip that into the crumbs and then start rolling it. And like that, it's done and it's ready to hit the pan. So cook it at a moderate heat, make them nice and golden and use plenty of butter in there. That'll make it really nice and crisp. And these just needs to be dipped in boiling water. Yep, 15 seconds, it's done. That's it, I've got my lovely vegetables here. A bit of that caramelized butter on top of them. Got my pike pickled vegetables sauce. It's plating time. Mm. Have a look at that. If you've got kids that love fish sticks and you want them to eat proper fish, then this is a really nice way to get them to do just that. This is just really nice, good fish. Clean, simple, nice and easy to do. Mm. So here we are at the end of our first leg of our exploration of Estonia. And I have to say, it's been a wonderful couple of days. Estonia really is an amazingly beautiful country and can boast with some of the most friendly people that I've ever met. And even though we've crossed the Baltic Sea and we're in a new country where I don't speak the language, well, I have to say, I feel very much at home here. Perhaps it's because it's not so different from Sweden where I come from. And gastronomy-wise, something really exciting is happening here. In Estonia, when it comes to food, they're really using the new Nordic cuisine in the most exquisite of ways. They take power from their old traditions and they're combining it with contemporary cooking. And the result is quite amazing. And I think we're on the verge of discovering something really unique and wonderful here. Perhaps even a true hidden gem of the Nordic countries.